I'm Josh from Posh, and we're at the Sub-Zero Wolf showroom in North Scottsdale, and today we're going to make apple jelly. Now that may sound a little intimidating, but actually the use of a proper couple quick techniques, and you'll be right there with your friends making jelly all winter long. We're going to start out with some beautiful apples. If you can use crab apples, crab apples will make the best jelly because they have the most pectin in their skin, and pectin is what makes jelly set. What we're going to do is we're going to take four apples, peel them, but we're going to save the skins. We're going to take the skins and the apple, peel our final apple. I like to use these handy Swiss peelers that look laterally. They're so much easier on your wrist and your hands when you're trying to slice. And we're going to take these, and I'm going to cut them into quarters. I have already cored them with my fancy little apple corer here. And we're going to chop them into about thirds once we're there. Once we've got all of our apples chopped, we're going to go ahead, toss them into the pot. Four apples is, is going to take about one and a half cups of apple juice. Try to use fresh, unpasteurized apple juice if you can. It will make a better jelly. Then we're going to use about one cup of sugar. And after our one cup of sugar, we're going to use the zest of about one grapefruit for a little freshness and acidity. And then we're going to use all those skins, set them in there. And we're going to turn this on medium-high heat, allow this to come up to a simmer. And once it comes up to a simmer, we're going to cover it with a lid, maybe a mixing bowl turned upside down. We want to trap all those nice juices and aromas in there. Once it comes up to a simmer, we're going to let it simmer for about two more hours slowly and carefully. We don't want the sugars to descend to the bottom of the pot. And the last thing we're going to do when we have a little bit of liquid is I have some powdered pectin that I've mixed with a little bit of water. I do about one tablespoon to about four tablespoons of water. And we're going to add that to our syrup. You'll notice it'll have a very, very chunky cooked apple watery consistency if we've done it right. So we're going to take that, stir it in there, mix everything up really good. Make sure everything's cooked down. It's almost all liquid. And we're going to take it off the heat. And the next process can be a little lengthy. We're going to take ourselves a strainer and slowly add all that apple liquid to our strainer and just push everything through real forcefully. It should be a pulp at this point. It should fall right apart. Drive all that liquid through our strainer, get everything out. If there's an extra seed or some of the skins at this point are just going to wring themselves out and put all that liquid into a bottom mixing bowl that we have here. So once we've got all of our liquid sequestered in the bottom of a pan, you can check it and see if you need just a touch more sugar. Should be good acidity. Should be nice and sweet. If you want to throw a cinnamon stick in there, you can. But some people like their apple jelly to be real pure and have a nice crisp apple flavor. So what we're going to do is now that we've got this set aside, we're going to drop it into a bowl of ice water or put it right into our refrigerator. And you want to let that set for about four to six hours. Take it out of the refrigerator and look at what a great consistency jelly we have here. Mmm, yum, right? So if you want to just double up on the pleasure, you can have an apple two ways. Cut yourself an apple, dip it into your apple jelly, and enjoy the great taste of fall and winter all year long with your fresh apple jelly. Cheers and enjoy. Uh -huh.